God lives and works today. He is looking for people who will believe in Him, especially believe in His love. For God's love is more wonderful and real than the most perfect human relationship. Today's meditation by Basilea Schlink shares what the Word of God has to say to us about His offer of love. In Revelation 3.20, we read, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him, and he with me. But do we really believe that Jesus is standing before the door of our heart seeking admission? Jesus is standing before each one of us, asking us a question. It's actually the only question which really concerns him. Do you love me? Behind this question lies Jesus' desire to be loved. He's asking for our love, for it is so precious to him. It's the thing he desires the most. This is the first question he asked Peter after his resurrection. It is the question of the risen Lord to all of us who know how he suffered and died for us out of love. He asks, Will you respond to my love by giving me yours? Will you give me your heart so that there's nothing else in it but me alone? Do you love me? Whoever can't believe that Jesus' greatest desire is for our love must remember that God's first commandment is to love him above everything else. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Matthew 22, verse 37. For Jesus, it is too small a thing to have redeemed us, to have freed us from the bonds of the devil. He wants to give us more. He wants to enter into a covenant of love with us for time and eternity. His love urges us to be united with him, to be in him, to share everything with him. But perhaps you're thinking, how can I come into such a relationship with Jesus? Love for Jesus is the commitment which can say, Take my life and everything that makes life worth living for me, people, goods, and wishes of all sorts. I love you. That is why I have to give everything to you. Love holds nothing back. Yes, it wants to give the beloved those things which are especially valuable. How can we comprehend that what Jesus desires from us is actually such a simple thing, just to love him? How can we understand that he wants something so beautiful and so blissful, not just obedience, but rather fervent love? This is not just a relationship with some human being who may disappoint us, and with whom the relationship of love may be quickly dimmed. No, we may love him who will never disappoint us and who loves us with an inexpressible love. Jesus is standing at the door of your heart and he's asking, will you let me into your heart? Do you love me? Oh, make me thine, my Savior, loved most holy, that I may only live to give thee This program by Basilea Schlink has come to you from the little land of Canaan. If you would like a free leaflet by the same author, please write to God Lives and Works Today, 9849 North 40th Street, Phoenix, Arizona, 85028-4099. That's God Lives and Works Today, 9849 North 40th Street, Phoenix, Arizona, 85028-4099. God bless you. God lives and works today, and His Word, the Holy Scriptures, is also alive, with helpful, practical, and powerful directives for our lives. Today's meditation by Basilea Schlink will share about some of these. A better cry rings from the bird, its challenge even to hell is heard. Jesus the Lord is victor. He has subdued the devil's might, for he has won the fateful fight on Calvary's cross so dreadful. 
The Bible gives us many clear directives for our fight against sin. For example, in Matthew 6.19, we read how to fight against worry. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. Or in Matthew 6.33, Jesus tells us so clearly, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. Perhaps we need to fight against our inability to love. Jesus tells us in Luke 6, 27 and 28, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. And so we could go on. The Bible gives us clear directives, but it also shows us through them how totally incapable we are of fulfilling God's commandments. Therefore we are driven even more to praise the redemption of Jesus and the power of His blood. These verses are a great help to us, for they do not let us indulge in our own inclinations. They do not let us continue to sin indifferently. They make us set goals of faith for ourselves and search to find the next step. For example, imagine a person who is in danger of forming a wrong relationship with another person, and yet he believes in the redemption of Jesus over this sin. But what good will it do if he continues to live near this person or even helps him or her to get a job in the same firm, thus intentionally bringing himself into a situation of temptation and sin? Scripture constantly challenges us to escape from the corruption, to flee from Babylon. Whoever deliberately nourishes his sins cannot expect them to die. And unless his sins die, he will never be spiritually whole, nor will he have the blessing of the Lord. That is why it is so important that we keep our eyes open and accept and obey the Bible with our whole hearts. So strive in faith that you will win, for Christ can conquer every sin. Christ's help means always You have been listening to a program written by Basilea Schlink of the Little Land of Canaan. To learn more about how God lives and works today, visit us at our website, www.canaan.org. That's K-A-N-A-A-N dot org. If you contact us, we would be happy to send you a free inspirational booklet. If you do not have access to the web, please write to God Lives and Works Today, 9849 North 40th Street, Phoenix, Arizona, 85028-4099. God bless you. God lives and works today. Just as Jesus came 2,000 years ago to comfort his people, so he comes to us today. In times of suffering that seem unending and greater than we can bear, he not only promises to meet our deepest needs in the situation, but he offers a special comfort to us. In today's meditation by Basilea Schlink, Comfort for the Sick and Suffering, we catch a glimpse of the goal he longs for us to reach through our suffering. O Lord my God, will the anguish of this sickness never end? Week follows week, and there isn't the slightest ray of hope. There's no end in sight. Again and again I am told to wait patiently. However, God doesn't demand patience from us without giving it to us. He helped me during a time of sickness to be patient in this way. A visitor brought me a card with one word written on it which shone brightly like a star, 
later. It was taken from the Bible verse found in Hebrews 12, verse 11. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. Later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, later means that I have something special awaiting me after this sickness. I can look forward to it like a child looking forward to Christmas. There, I may pick a fruit which will be precious and taste marvelous. It's the fruit of righteousness. That means that I will have been transformed a little, so that the Heavenly Father can say to me, This is the way I like you. Now you are well-pleasing and beautiful to me. Suffering is the vessel in which I will be purified. Yes, in suffering, the Master, Jesus, forms His image in hearts and spirits. He wants to form in us now His image of love, mercy, gentleness and humility, which we can then bear in eternity. How blissful we will be above, for bliss is promised to all the gentle and merciful. Suffering, who is worthy of you? Here you are a despised cross. Above, you are worth the cost. You bring us glory ever anew. Later, this one little word brings us such bliss. Now with joy I expectantly look forward to what this later will bring. I rest in peace, O oh Father, your hands are holding me. All is by you directed, you lead me tenderly. I rest in you. You have been listening to a program written by Basilea Schlink of the Little Land of Canaan. To learn more about how God lives and works today, visit us at our website, www.canaan.org. That's K-A-N-A-A-N dot org. If you contact us, we would be happy to send you a free inspirational booklet. If you do not have access to the web, please contact this radio station for our postal address. God bless you. God lives and works today. Yes, He is truly alive, and He is stronger than any other power in heaven or earth. Christ has conquered hell and sin. Today's meditation is the testimony of someone who personally experienced this. A Christian once dreamt that he was being pursued by a demon. He saw that the demon had been given a commission from Satan to bring the Christian back into the realm of darkness. First, the demon tried to make the Christian fall into the trap of covetousness. Then he tried to make him apathetic. But the man stood firm. His faith was steadfast. In the end, however, the demon did win. But how? He whispered critical remarks about others into the man's ear. And it worked. The man accepted these thoughts, and he began to find fault with everyone else, but not with himself. This led to the next stage. He lost all desire for the word of God and for prayer. Finally, he could no longer win others for Christ. How the demon rejoiced! He had discovered the perfect method. At that moment the man awoke from his sleep. Deeply horrified, he realized, This is no dream. God has shown me the cause of my own spiritual death. This experience brought the man to repentance. 
then the Lord laid it upon his heart to write down this dream so that many others might still be awakened and challenged to reckon seriously with the word of Scripture. Be sober, be watchful. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. First Peter chapter 5 One day I came across this account in a booklet, and as I read it I was startled. I came to a conclusion then. It was not harmless that I had been judging and could not forgive a certain person who had been causing me trouble and hurting me. A determination grew in my heart. Resist the devil. Satan shall not gain power over me and destroy my life for now and eternity. I began to follow what is written in the Bible. Fight the good fight of the faith. Even though it meant sacrificing fifteen minutes' sleep, each day I began calling upon the victory name of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb over my criticizing and inability to forgive. These sins had opened the way for Satan to come into my life. Your precious blood has such great might, it saves from Satan's heart so tight. I praise your blood that says And Jesus proved himself to be the victor who has come to destroy Satan's power. Now I experienced, instead of seeing the faults of others, I saw my own sin. I could no longer judge those who had upset me. Yes, I can really testify. Jesus lives. Jesus is victor. So strive in faith that you will win, for Christ can conquer every sin. Christ's help means always victory. He stretches out his strong right hand, our foes before him cannot stand, and they are all defeated. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This program by Basilea Schlink has come to you from the little land of Canaan. If you would like a free leaflet by the same author, please write to God Lives and Works Today, 9849 North 40th Street, Phoenix, Arizona, 85028-4099. That's God Lives and Works Today, 9849 North 40th Street, Phoenix, Arizona, 85028-4099. God bless you.